you break the exploration of money into mind, body, and soul, which I thought was really, really interesting. Why did you do it this way? Yeah, in, in my book, it is that mind, body, and soul because it affects all parts of our lives. Like in our mind, when I say the word money, it uh, elicits a part of the brain called the nucleus accumbens, the reward center of the brain. They've taken brain scans of people who are high on cocaine and compare them to people who are on money, who look at money. They find that they're the same. They take um, men and show them pictures of dead bodies, naked women, and money. And what gets the most excitement? It's money. <laughs> so there's actually a biological in our, in our minds, how we conceive of money, is super stimulating, right? That's that, you know, and then in terms of body, it, if I tell you, you know, for $20,000, I want you to come uh, to the park with me, you will move your body. <laughs> you, will, <laughs> you will move your body, You yes. will be there, right? <laughs> Even for $200, I'll probably be there. <laughs> and your soul, look, you've studied the scriptures, like 80% of what the, the scriptures, eight of the, I think, 10 um, uh, parables in the book of Matthew are about money or wealth, right? The New Testament, Jesus is always talking about money or what to do with wealth, or his parables are some, somewhat couched in ag agrarian economics. Mm, mm -hmm. So Jesus, the, the, the New Testament, even the Old Testament, is uncomfortable how much they're talking about money. The Quran, 83 verses having to do with money, hmm. right? Um, Hinduism, a lot of teaching about money. So whichever God you subscribe to, they're all talking about what to do or what not to do with money. Why is that? So they're saying one of the uh, measurements of your soul is however you use money can determine the fate of your soul, hmm. yeah. right? Because it reveals what your priorities are. So that's why I broke it up into mind, body, and soul.